Hey everyone, it's me Nita and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make these adorable shorts. I do plan on adding these to my Etsy shop, so I'm really excited to come up with a bunch of different types of pairs and pair them up with a matching shirt and offer birthday outfits for not only girls now, but also boys. So, um, a few materials that you will need. You'll need um, the pattern, which I have linked down in the description below for you guys. I did modify a few things from the pattern, uh, but nothing major. But you'll get to see that later on in the video. And um, you'll also need a serger and a sewing machine, or you could just have a sewing machine with a zigzag stitch. You don't need a serger necessarily for this pattern. I like to use it though because it gives it a more finished look, but if, as long as you have a sewing machine with a zigzag stitch, you are good to go. Um, and you'll also need some elastic too. I used um, one and a quarter inch for the elastic and depending on the size um, you'll make, it'll vary on how long the elastic will be. Uh, one and a quarter inch piece of elastic and then whatever the width is for your waistband, that's what you'll use. All the information will be in the pattern. Um, in this video, I am gonna show you guys how to print out the pattern so you only have one size on there so you don't get all confused on when you're when you're cutting out the pattern or which size you're trying to cut. You could actually print out the specific pattern that you will need and I'll show you guys that. But I really hope you guys enjoy this um, to semi-tutorial. This is my first time doing this pattern so I will have some oopsies in this tutorial, but again, this is my first time making these shorts, and the second time I ended up making them, um, they came out perfect. So, and honestly, this was a really easy pattern to follow, and I highly recommend it. Again, there are a few little changes that I did make to the pattern, but nothing, nothing major. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and I do plan on making a part two of this video because I'm going to make a pair of pants as well. So this pattern comes with the shorts and the pants, so you kind of get two different patterns in one. Um, so I will be doing a part two for this, so stay tuned for a pant, pants version of this. And I'm just, I'm really excited to add these to my shop. I ended up making these two pants or shorts for my son. I made two pairs, so each of my sons will be able to have one. The shorts come with functional pockets which I love. And I don't know if the pattern is true to size. I still need to try the shorts on to my boys, but they're currently asleep. So once they wake up in the morning, um, I will have them try it on. And um, not in this video, but in a short video that I'll post probably right after I post this video, I'll kind of give you guys um, a heads up on if the pattern is true to size. So in this video, I made a size three or two to three and um, a four to five or a three to four, so a size four. So I made a three T and a four T. So hopefully they fit, um, but I'll let you guys know in a short video after I post this video. So, and if you guys don't know what shorts are on YouTube, basically they're like a TikTok, Instagram reel version, but for YouTube. And I've been trying my best to upload shorts here and there for you guys to kind of give you guys some behind the scenes or just let you guys know what I'm working on in between videos because editing videos do take a lot of time so I want to try and give you guys as much content as I can so I've been posting a few shorts here and there in between video videos and I hope you guys are enjoying the shorts um, but I definitely love doing the longer videos for you guys, so definitely stay tuned for some more work with me's, some more um, tutorials because I have pants that I'm be making and I'm be making something else too that I'll be adding to my shop as well. So definitely stay tuned for some more content, but let's dive in on how to print this pattern out. Okay guys, so right now I'm gonna go ahead and print out this pattern. So with this pattern, when you print it out just normally, it will print out every single size onto like one sheet of paper. And I don't want to do that because it just gets super confusing when trying to cut it out. So I'm actually going to be using a software on my computer called Adobe Acrobat DC. And um, I just selected layers 
on this software and I'm able to select and deselect which sizes I want to print out. So as you can see, I unselected all the sizes except the one size that I want to print out, which is I believe a 2T two, two or 3T. So I got rid of all the other sizes. So basically all I have to do now is just send it to my printer and it will print out the one size that I need. Um, so I'm gonna go over here to file and select print. And I'm just gonna print out the sizes that I, or the pages that I want basically. So I just do a range. So basically from this page to this page is what I wanna print. And I'm just double checking that I'm printing out all the pages that I need. And I just send it to my printer, which is super convenient, super easy. I don't get confused on all the different sizes. I just have that one size that I need to cut out just to be printed out. So it's so convenient. So I'm going to go ahead and select another size that I'm going to be using for today's tutorial as well. I'm going to be doing two different sizes. So I just selected the other size that I'm going to be using and unselected the other size. This time though, I'm gonna print out the whole um, packet basically because I, I want like the instructions and the step-by-step -step tutorial. Okay guys, so I have the pattern all laid out. So um, I'm gonna cut everything out, tape it all together. Uh, 10, 11, 12, depending on the size you would make, um, it would go down here, but because I'm making a smaller size, um, I don't have to attach it. But this is, how everything looks. So on the pattern, it comes with the pants and the shorts. So um, I'm just making the shorts tonight. I plan on doing the pants in a whole separate video to show you guys how I do that. Um, but this is the pattern all laid out. So I'm gonna go ahead, cut each piece out and tape it together, and then um, we'll start cutting out the fabric. Okay, so here are all the pieces. So I did, uh, I cut them out as pants, but I'm gonna cut them 
where it says shorts. So this is what it would look like as the pants. But right here it says shorts. And I plan on making pants. So I'm just going to cut this part off. I'm going to label it too. Whenever I do make pants, I already have the piece made and I can just either tape it or just put it together and then cut it out that way. I just don't want to waste any of the paper. So I'm just going to label it both pieces. So here are the shorts. I'm going to save this. I need to add a little bit more tape. I'm going to do, this, do the same with this one. Alright, so here are the pieces for the shorts. You have two of the pockets and then your waistband as well. So I need to do one more set of these because I'm going to make two pairs of shorts tonight. I'm going to do one pair for Mason and one pair for Jackson. So... Um, I need to, and they both wear different sizes, so I'm going to go ahead and set this one off to the side, and I'm going to do this again. Okay, so we are going to be using this carrot bullet fabric. I purchased this off Etsy. I'm hoping I have enough to be able to do both of these outfits. Um, so I'm going to be doing an Easter outfit for my boys, because they're going to go see the Easter bunny tomorrow. So I want them to dress all cute. Um, okay, so when it comes to fabric, especially knit fabric or bullet fabric, um, one side is stretchier than the other. So you have your salvage edges over here. The other one is on this side. So typically, from salvage to salvage, that's going to be the stretchiest versus this way. So I always check, just in case like the salvages are cut off, I always double check and make sure which side is the stretchiest because that's going to help us when cutting out the fabric um, because you want the stretchy side to go horizontal basically because when we fit the shorts or the pants over the baby's legs or the toddler's legs, um, we want to make sure that there's enough stretch to be able to fit over their diaper and their, their thighs and their legs. So when cutting out this pattern, you're going to do two layers. You can do it um, right sides to right sides or opposite sides or wrong sides to wrong sides. But basically you want the fabric to be mirrored um, when cutting it out. So I have one piece layered here and I really hope, I really hope I have enough of this fabric. I'm not sure if I am going to have enough. So this fabric is one yard. So we'll see how many shorts we can get out um, of a yard. So uh, this is a size 3T and the other pair that I'm going to be cutting is going to be a size 4T. Okay, so there's one piece cut. I'm going to cut another piece. piece and then I like to square up my fabric this makes it easier to work with okay and now I'm gonna go ahead and flip this up again and I'm gonna hopefully perfectly be able to do the pockets
Okay, so there's one pocket. And you have to cut two of the pockets, two of each pant leg, the front and the back. And then for the waistband, you just have to cut one. Now with these shorts, there's no cuffs or anything, luckily. Same for the pants, no cuffs for this um, because this is a rolled up design, I guess. That's the best way I could describe it. So basically where the bottom of the pants are, you're going to roll them up rather than have like a cuff. And actually for this one, I just noticed, we actually will have to fold it, but we're gonna fold it going this way. Because again, this is gonna be the belt, so we want the belt to be extremely stretchy, especially around the waist, so. I'm gonna have the fold, place my pattern on the fold. the waistband and like the pockets you could totally switch out the colors so they're like coordinating for me I'm just gonna do one just basic color um, so there's one pair of pants or shorts I should say cut out um, now I need to cut out the other pair if I end up liking this pattern I do plan on adding um, pants and shorts for boys I need to focus on adding some boy stuff because I honestly I really don't have a lot of boy items. I do have like boy baby blankets and boy um, shirts, but nothing like as a complete outfit, which I feel sucks for little boys. They're always left out. Um, so I want to try and have something for little boys too to wear because, you know, Having a full birthday outfit is super cute or having a full outfit for like Easter, Christmas, holidays like that I think is, um, would be really nice to have like an option for boys. So the shorts are cut. This is my first time using bullet fabric too for boys clothing. I usually only use bullet fabric for girls stuff. But that's just because I only offer girl stuff in like bell bottoms and now skirted bummies. Okay, now I'm cutting out some more pockets. I really hope this pattern is cute. The only thing I'm worried about is the rolled up like cuff portion. I'm not sure if I'm going to like that, but we shall see how it looks when it's like all finished. Okay, so I do have quite a bit of fabric left. I could even probably make a pair of like bummies. Um, if I like how this turns out, I'm thinking of making my little little baby nephew a matching pair of shorts too for Easter. But here are the two pairs of shorts cut. Now let's go ahead and head over to my sewing room. Okay, so I like to print out the pattern just to have it by my side and to be able to reference. So I'm gonna go ahead and just flip to like the section where it has like all the directions. So one thing I like about this Etsy shop or these patterns, and I bought patterns from this Etsy shop before, I like how there's like a step-by-step -step picture tutorial, which makes it so much easier because I'm like a, a visual person. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew up one pair in front of you guys. Okay, so all the pieces are cut out. So the first step that you're going to do is um, place pocket A on the front leg. So I made sure to keep each piece with like the pattern so I know which piece is which. Um, I'm hopefully when I get, when I um, have done this pattern multiple times, I'll know which is which. 
but as of right now, I don't know which piece is which, so. Okay, so it says to take, place pocket A on the front leg, right sides together, and sew along the pocket opening. So I'm gonna just mash that up. You can pin it, I'm gonna pin it. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and sew it now, and I'm gonna sew along this edge, this edge right here. And I'm using my brother 1034DX Serger. I purchased this from Walmart for like $1.99, and I always mention how this machine was probably one of my best investments. Um, I definitely had made have made my money back from this machine. Okay. Okay, so now it says to turn the pocket piece underneath and to the wrong side, press and top stitch. So I'm gonna need my sewing machine to be able to do that. So Okay, again, you're gonna fold this over and you're gonna top stitch that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do the top stitch for the shorts. So here is like the little pocket piece and like here's the back. Um, it says to fold it over like this and then you're going to top stitch that. I'm gonna use a straight stitch with this but because I'm gonna be using a stretchy fabric, I'm going to um, increase my stitch length to 3.6. So anytime you're using like a knit fabric, I suggest um, having your like stitch length above three, between three to like three and a half, I think is good. Also like to back stitch too just to kind of lock those stitches in place so it doesn't come unraveled and I'm just trimming off any extra threads and then you're gonna unfold the pocket now you're gonna take your pocket B and you're gonna place the pocket B on top of the um, pocket A with right sides together and sew along the curved edges this I'm gonna go ahead and pin Took me a second to try and figure out how to place the pocket, so I'm hoping that I did it correctly. I'm gonna do that for both pieces, and then I'm gonna take this and go back to my serger and use my serger to sew these two pocket pieces together. Okay, so here is the front of the pants. You have one pocket here, and then your other pocket piece Part A and Part B, you're gonna have them right sides together, and we're gonna sew along this part, the curved part basically. So I'm gonna do that for both of these pieces really quick. And this makes me wish I had a chair that had wheels on it so I could just kind of swivel back and forth between the two machines. Um, again, you could just strictly use your sewing machine and you don't have to go back and forth, but I like using my serger because it's quicker than my sewing machine, and also, um, it just gives a more finished look, in my opinion. And when you're sewing the curved edges, um, you know, you can go slow and just adjust when needed. And then it kind of looks like that. So you have your two pieces sewn together and then you have like this opening right here. So I don't know what to do next. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that one aside and then I'm gonna go ahead and sew this one and then we'll see what we have to do next. This is like my first time doing this pattern. So hopefully I get it right the first time. There are those two pieces. Now for the next step, it says, so it says to turn the pocket to the wrong side. Okay, so this part is, this next part is a little tricky because I'm not used to doing pockets, so hopefully I'm doing it correctly. But let me adjust my camera for you guys. 
So here is like the little pocket that we just sewed. Now it says to turn the pocket to the wrong sides. And then I want to make sure that all the edges are all lined up. So I'm just going to adjust my pocket, clip it. And then we'll have our little pocket right here. And then it says to stitch along this top part right here. So you can see the back of the pocket. We're going to stitch right here to where it's like the edge of the pocket. So from here to here where the clip is, I'm basically going to top stitch that. And then same, you can see here's the pocket. But I'm only going to top stitch where the pocket piece is. So from basically from here to here, I'll be um, top stitching. So I'm going to take this back over to my sewing machine. Before I do that though, I'm going to go ahead and get this one situated too. Okay, so again, I just top stitch this little piece up at the top and then this little side piece too. And then now you have like a functional little pocket. Love this so far. So far it's not, this pattern isn't too tricky. I really do appreciate the, um, the pictures though because I don't think I could do this pattern without the pictures. Um, it would just be too challenging for me because I'm definitely a visual learner. Don't forget to back stitch, um, especially right here, because if you don't back stitch, um, I feel like the pocket might kind of rip open, and we don't want that. So definitely remember when you first start to stitch, you back stitch, and then when you are about to end your stitch, you're going to back stitch again. So I like to do it at the beginning and then at the end, just to kind of lock those stitches in place so they don't come undone. And I'm just trimming off all the extra thread. Okay, so I have these two pieces done. Let's see what we have to do next. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and stitch the two pieces we made the pockets with. Um, we're gonna go ahead and stitch those together now. So um, here are the top of the shorts. You can see the pocket. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch right along this area. And I'm also gonna do that too with the back side of the shorts as well. Okay, so here are the front of the shorts. So cute. Oh, I'm so excited. Hopefully these fit good. Um, I did Jackson, he wears, he wears a size three, but he's close to wearing a size four. Mason, he is close to wearing a size three, but most of the time he wears a size two. But for these, I did a four, and then for the other pair, I did um, a three. Hopefully, I probably should have checked the size chart before I made these, but I'm sure they'll be okay. Okay, so here are the back of the shorts. Now we're going to go ahead and place the front and the back of the shorts together. These look huge, so I'm a little worried, but hopefully they're true to size. I'm happy that I have, um, I'm happy that I'm going to be doing boy outfits now because my boys, I have a, two boys, a three and a two year old, and um, they'll be able to model my clothes now because I don't have any girl models for all my girl outfits, so at least now I'll have some models for some of my boy items. And basically what I'm doing now is I'm going to do the sides of both, I'm going to um, sew along the sides of the shorts and then I'm going to sew along 
And then I'm gonna sew the crotch area. So right now I'm just gonna focus on doing the sides. Okay, the sides are sewn. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the crotch. Now with the crotch, I like to line up the seams and I like to use a little tiny little clothing pin to do that. So I'll match up the seams. And one thing that helps me is to, and hopefully my camera will focus, I like to tuck this seam to the right and then this seam to the left so it's kinda like they're opposites and that'll kinda help lay your seam to where it will match up. Um, I learned that from quilting and I find that doing that this, doing that as well with uh, making clothes has been very, very helpful. So now I'm gonna go ahead and sew the crotch area. And I get a question, I get this question a lot. Um, about my blade. Um, I actually have my blade turned off because I'm not an expert at sewing clothes and I always struggle with sewing the crotch area because when I have the blade on I always like cut too much of the fabric for the crotch area. So I found that turning it off until I feel comfortable has helped out a lot. I'm thinking though I'm getting to the point where I'm, I should be able to now be able to sew crotches without you know cutting off a big piece. Okay, so again, these look kind of big, so I'm a little worried. Um, I'm gonna try and remember to film them in the morning. I wanna um, have them try these on. I don't know if I'll include that in the video because I wanna get this video up before we go and get um, the pictures taken with the Easter Bunny, but I'll make sure and film like a little short for you guys. So if you haven't already, make sure that you're subscribed so when I do post them wearing the outfit, you guys will be able to see it because I won't be adding it to this video. It'll be in a short, probably um, like right after I post this video, I'll have the short up as well. Okay, so we have that portion done. Now we're gonna go ahead and do um, the waistband and for the waistband we're gonna open it up do right sides together and where the raw edges are right here we're just gonna sew okay now we're gonna fold the waistband in half with the seam inside And then again, with the waistband, the seam, on the, we're gonna have the seam, we're gonna have the seam on the inside and just like I did with the crotch area, I'm gonna make sure that one seam is going to the left and the other seam is going to the right. Make sure that they match up and then I'm gonna go ahead and stick my pin like right where that seam is in the front and when I poke it through the back, I wanna make sure that needle is going through the back seam and then I'm gonna poke it right through again, making sure that that needle is going through the center of that seam. Okay, now this part, I'm kinda curious how this part's gonna turn out because I've never done a waistband with elastic. So I will be needing elastic for this portion and I, uh, the pattern recommends getting an inch and a quarter for the waistband, so I got some elastic that's an inch and a quarter. I definitely need to purchase this on a big, big roll because I have a feeling that I'm gonna be using up a lot of this, but I got two of these. Hopefully, that should be more than enough for this project, but um, you definitely will need elastic too. Okay, so the next portion we're gonna do is with our shorts, they're still inside out. We're going to take the waistband and we're gonna tuck it into the shorts 
Um, before I do that though, I'm going to go ahead and pin the corners. So when I do sew the waistband, it won't be like all wonky. Now I like to match up the back needle with my little clip and then kind of match it up and then I'm going to put two more little clips right here. And then the pin I want to go in the back because that's where the seam is. So I'm going to make sure and have that where the back of the shorts are going to be. I'm going to match up that seam with the back of the back seam as well. And then the side seams, I like to match up with the clips. And then same again, I want this seam to match up with the back seam as well. So I'm going to make sure that when I take my pin, it's going through the middle of that seam in the front and the back. Okay, just like that. And you want the raw edges to be um, raw edge to raw edge. So now we're going to go ahead and sew. Now when I'm sewing though, I'm going to make sure and leave about two inches of like an opening because that's where we're going to slip our elastic through the waistband. So um, let's go ahead and sew this, but just remember to leave a two inch opening. And I like to always start where the pin is, so the back of the shorts, I like to start as closely as I can to that seam because um, that'll help ensure that that seam stays aligned and doesn't get all like wonky. And then I just wanna make sure when I'm sewing, and I'm making sure that all three layers are all even and all aligned with each other. Because if they're not, you can end up having a hole in your waistband and you don't want that. And then also too, whenever I start to sew over a seam, I really like to make sure that I have my hand on that seam and I'm pressing down because I don't want those layers to slip and slide and then everything gets all mixed up. So I'm getting close to the opening, or I'm getting close to where I started. So I want to make sure that I have a two inch gap. So I have my little opening. Now I'm going to take my elastic. And I'm going to use my little bod, bod, bodkin. I always get that mixed up. And for the elastic, I need to see how big that needs to be. And then for the elastic, it'll tell you on this page um, what size you'll need. So you'll just find your size that you're making, and then that's how big you're going to cut your elastic. So this pair that I'm making is the three to four size or size four. So I'm gonna find that size and then it tells me that it's gonna be 19.7 inches. So I'm gonna make sure that, my goodness, that's like barely any. And I'm happy that I bought two because I thought I would be able to get more out of this. Okay, so I just marked 19. I did 19 and a half just because Jackson, he has a really skinny waist. So it took like just a little bit off. And now I'm going to um, put my elastic through the waistband. So you'll have like an opening, but you wanna make sure that you put it through the waistband. And when you get it through the waistband, we're gonna um, take it back to my sewing machine and we're gonna go ahead and stitch these two ends of the elastic together. Okay, so 
So now I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew these two pieces together. I'm going to use a zigzag stitch for this. And again, I used a zigzag stitch for this and I made sure to, um, when I overlapped the elastic, I made sure to do like, that I did one side over here and the other side over here to kind of lock both of the ends in place. Okay, so I made sure to get the waistband all adjusted. Now I still have this opening right here. I'm gonna use my serger and just close that opening up real fast. I'm gonna make sure too when I'm sewing over this opening that I'm not sewing over the elastic. I just wanna cl uh, close up that opening. Okay, so that opening's closed now. Now I'm gonna use my little tool. It's called a knit picker. And I'm gonna take this extra thread, my little tail, and I'm gonna tuck these into the stitches using my knit picker. Um, you wanna do this so the pants don't come unraveled. You can also use a wide eye needle and, do, um, and tuck in the stitches that way, or the thread, you can tuck in the thread that way. For me, I found that using a knit picker has been the easiest for me. Okay, so one thing, I was doing so good. Um, so I did, I don't know if you guys can see it, my waistband, I had it twisted. So I'm gonna have to undo these and restitch the waistband. I really thought I was gonna have zero mistakes the first time, but again, this is my first time making it. So I'm gonna have to undo these stitches and um, redo the waistband by you know making sure it's not like all wonky. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and fix that and then I'll show you what we'll do next. Okay, so I was able to get the waistband all fixed. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it right sides out. And you guys can kind of see the shorts. I'm hoping these aren't gonna be too big for Jackson. He's asleep right now or I would have him try them on. So fingers crossed they fit. So now what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna fold um, the bottom of the shorts. We're gonna fold those up. Now this, these short, this pattern is a rolled up shorts patterns. I'm gonna fold it up three quarters of an inch. So I did fold it over once. You're gonna fold it over again. So just like this. I'm kinda tempted just to fold them in rather than doing, I'm not sure if I'm gonna like this or not, but we'll test it out. Okay. And now basically what we're gonna do, this is what the pattern says. The pattern basically just wants you to do a top stitch from the bottom of the pants to the top of the, the rolled up part. So you're not gonna stitch all the way around, you're just gonna stitch a little line here, a little line here, a little line here, and same for over here. So, I don't know if I'm gonna like that. We'll see, I'm gonna test it on this pair of shorts and if I don't like it, I would probably suggest doing um, a top stitch all the way around to kind of hold the fabric in place or I would tuck it under and do a hem that way. Um, but we'll go ahead and see if I like this um, or not. Hopefully I like it, but we'll see. Okay, so I don't think I'm a fan of the rolled up hem, so I'm thinking for the other pair of shorts, or I could undo it and just do a normal hem, which I might do. 
Yeah, I don't like that look. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna go ahead and undo it and just do a normal hem for the shorts. Okay, so I did a rolled hem, but I, I'm doing it on the inside so you can't see it. And this time I'm actually just gonna sew all around um, where the hem is. And this makes me wish I had a cover stitch. Definitely getting a cover stitch down the road um, would be a really good idea. I'm going to go ahead and stitch this down. I'm just going to use a basic stitch. I'm using, again, 3.6 for my stitch length. take this portion of your sewing machine off so you can kind of slide the pant leg in or the short leg in um, but I don't feel like taking it apart because I have a sticker right here that's kind of keeping this section attached to this section so I don't want to have to undo that that's something that you could do this is going to look a lot better. Um, doing this hem though was a pain in the butt. Okay, and I'm just trimming all the extra threads and then I'm going to turn it right sides out and we'll be able to see how these shorts look. Hopefully they look cute. Um, I like the pattern, just I just don't like the rolled up portion of the pattern. So, so I definitely recommend changing that. Unless you like that look, but for me, I'm not a big fan of it. So let's turn these out. I'm hoping that the pant legs are even. Let me go ahead and put my camera down. So I really love how this turned out. Um, this, this leg is a little bit longer just by like a quarter of an inch. So I definitely have to perfect matching up like my hems and making sure that they're even. So I'll definitely double check that for the next pair. But I really love how these turned out. I love that there's pockets. Love it. I think these are gonna look so cute on Jackson. Um, so definitely look out for a short, um, a short video of me just showing you guys what they look like on the boys. Um, I'm gonna make a matching shirt to go with these shirt with these shorts. Um, so I'll show you um, what the complete outfit will look like, and then I'm gonna go sew up the other pair. So I'm gonna go do that, and then I'll check back in with you guys. Okay, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the shirts that I'm gonna do um, to match with um, the shirts that I made. So I have this little tractor with some carrots on it, and then I have their names all ready to go. I'm gonna do the design on these gray shirts. I didn't wanna do a white shirt just because I felt like it was just too much white on white. And then black, I felt like it was a little much. So I think the gray will look good. I could have done embroidery, but I just felt like DTF was a quicker option for me. So I'm just waiting for my heat press to heat up and then I'm gonna go ahead and press these shirts. Okay guys, so this is the completed look. I really love how everything turned out. I can't wait till the boys can actually like try on the full outfit 
and I can take photos. But I am so excited to add these shorts to my Etsy shop and I can't wait to add the pants too. It's just going to be nice to be able to offer some things for some boys as well as for girls. So I'm so excited. That's all I could say. Alright guys, well that's going to be it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Definitely, if you haven't joined my Facebook group yet, please go join it because if you test out this pattern, I really want to see what you guys make and how you create it and all that stuff. So definitely go join my Facebook group. Give this video a like and subscribe if you want to see more tutorials like this. And then keep a lookout for the pants version of this to, um, pattern. So I'm really excited to test that out. I can't wait to do more like different designs and get these listed on my Etsy and see how well these do. Hopefully they do well. But I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.